Well, good morning. Good morning. Glad you're with us here on a beautiful day. Boy, has it been spectacular since fall started. Glad you're with us. A lot of uh, announcements, as usual. Uh, this afternoon, there will be a visitation for Francis Swift in Edinburgh from 2 to 5 at the funeral home there. That, of course, is Sherry Harker's father. Uh, Tonight, we're going to continue our watching of The Chosen. Here in the sanctuary on the screens, we'll be watching season one, episode two, perhaps episode three as well. We'll provide popcorn and drinks. We invite you to come. The uh, reception for the first episode a couple of weeks ago was very, very positive. So that will be tonight. 6.15-ish. Tuesday, Laundry Love at 12.30. Patty, where is Patty? Is Patty He's here? He's looking for a bulletin. Okay. I was just going to see if we needed to say anything about that. I think we've got all the slots full for that, but we'll double check. So Tuesday, Laundry Love at 12.30. Jail Ministry at 1. Brianna's Hope at 6. Wednesday, Online Bible Study at 6.30. Thursday, the visitation for Stan Adkins, uh, Steve's brother, will be at Freeman Funeral Home from 9.30 to 11.30. Then, then there will be a service at the funeral home at 11.30. That will be Thursday, and then Thursday evening we'll have on church. Patty, anything on Laundry Love? Oh, um. We could use one more person to help out for a couple of hours. So if you're interested, uh, come and see me after church. What time slot? Um, probably the 2.30. 2.30? Me. Okay. You'll be with Gail. Ish. 2.30, if you're available. Uh, other announcements. Uh, council met this week, and... We are going to go back to our COVID communion situation that we had prior with the, uh, the self-contained kits. I know that's no one's favorite, but starting next week, we'll do that. And we're just a little concerned about COVID. Several members have had it. It's kind of coming back. So we want to keep a handle on it so it doesn't get out of hand. Of course, we have sanitizer and masks and all of that for your protection here if you're interested. Um, the date for the annual meeting has been set for November 7th, first Sunday in November. We do need those to, uh, who are interested in serving on the council to volunteer uh, before you have to be voluntold. Um, <laughs> So if you are interested in volunteering and not voluntolding, uh, see Bryce, right? Who is here today. Uh, looking down the road on the horizon, trunk or treat, we have set that for October 30th, last Saturday in October at five o'clock. I'll be thinking about how you would like to contribute to that. And also, uh, Marvin tells me, I'm sorry? Three o'clock. Three o'clock, not five o'clock. Three o'clock, three to five, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, Marvin tells me that Beverly formally, formal, formally accepted the job, is that correct? Okay, we'll talk more about that here in a bit. Uh, birthdays, today, Linda Kuhn, they are out traveling in New England looking at leaves. Uh, Larry Cassidy's birthday is today, so happy birthday to them this week, Case Lower, and Barb has a birthday this week, so be sure to say happy birthday to Barb. Who has a birthday? Who else? I just said happy birthday. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right, prayers uh, for Nathan and Sherry Hale after the death of their daughter Amy, uh, for the Harkers and the Swift family. Uh, after the passing of her father Francis um, 
Even though the Kolpinskis are back and we're glad to see them, we continue to pray for them and their family and Deborah and Steve Adams and all who are afflicted with COVID. For Jim Barnes and John and Wayne and Alana and Kathy and Tom and Heidi who have cancer and continuing healing for Charlie, Paul and Carolyn and Tony. Is there anything we missed? Any names we missed? No? All right, well then let's go ahead and lift up these people and situations in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this beautiful day and for the opportunity of coming here to worship you in freedom and without fear. Bless our worship that it may be as a fragrant aroma to you. Lord, we pray your blessing this day upon those who need you in mind, body, and spirit, praying certainly for those in grief and sorrow, including family and friends of Amy Mandat, and for the Harker and Swift families over the passing of Francis. Fill them with your love and presence. Touch them in their sorrow and remind them of the promise of the resurrection. We pray for all afflicted with COVID that you would continue to bring healing to them, including the Kopinskis, for Steve and Deborah Adams. For those suffering from cancer, that you would bring them remission, healing, and hope, especially Jim Barnes, John, Wayne, Alana, Kathy, Tom, and Heidi. For continuing healing for Charlie, Paul, and Carolyn, and Tony. We thank you for another year of life for Linda and Larry and Case and Barb. We ask your blessing upon them and that you would draw them ever closer to you in the years ahead. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I would invite you to spend a few moments of your own in private and silent prayer and meditation as we prepare to come into the presence of the living God. Amen. At this time, I would ask those who are able to please stand for our call to worship and remain standing for our opening hymn. <laughs> Let us pray. O oh Lord, your decrees are sure and make the wise simple. Your ordinances are true and righteous altogether. Your commandments are clear and enlighten the eyes. Your law is perfect and revives the soul. Revive us again this day with your spirit as we come to bring you our worship and praise. Amen. And our opening hymn is on page 666.
seated. Good morning. Today's readings from the Old Testament are from the uh, Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 to 6, 10 to 16, and 24 to 29. The rabble with them began to crave other food, and again the Israelites started wailing and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost, also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, and onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. Moses heard the people of every family wailing at the entrance to their tents. The Lord became exceedingly angry, and Moses was troubled. He asked the Lord, Why have you brought this trouble on your servant? What have I done to displease you that you put the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give them birth? Why do you tell me to carry them in my arms as a nurse carries an infant to the land you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where can I get meat for all these people? They keep wailing to me, give us meat to eat. I cannot carry all these people by myself. The burden is too heavy for me. If this is how you're going to treat me, please go ahead and kill me. If I have found favor in your eyes, and do not let me face my own ruin. So Moses went out and told the people what the Lord had said. He brought together 70 of their elders and had them stand around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke with him. And he took some of the power of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. When the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but did not do so again. However, two men whose names were Eldad and Medad had remained in the camp. They were listed among the elders, but did not go out to the tent. Yet the spirit also rested on them, and they prophesied in the camp. A young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. Joshua, son of Nun, who had been Moses' aide since youth, spoke up and said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses replied, Are you jealous for my sake? I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets, and the Lord would put his spirit on them. Then Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. I have to take a deep breath here. <laughs> From the New Testament, Mark chapter 9, verses 38 to 50. Teacher, said John, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we told him to stop, because he was not one of us. Do not stop him, Jesus said, for no one who does a miracle in my name can in the next moment say anything bad about me. For whoever is not against us is for us. Truly, I tell you, anyone who gives you a cup of water in my name because you belong to the Messiah will certainly not lose their reward. If anyone causes one of these little ones those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them if a large millstone were hung around their neck and they were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to be in a life maimed than with two hands to go into hell, where the fire never goes out. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where the worms that eat them do not die and the fire is not quenched. Everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can you make it salty again? Have salt among yourselves and be at peace with each other. A 
And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. I'm not used to having this many people up on the front row. A little, maybe I need to be over here a little bit more. In 2013, a woman named Melanie Smith was living in an apartment, I guess you'd call it a flat, because she was in London, England. And she was leading an unhappy life, primarily because of an unhappy relationship with her significant other. A lot of arguing, a lot of fighting, a lot of anger. Directly above her, there lived a couple that seemed to have a really good relationship. A long-lasting relationship. A deeper, happier relationship. So, one particular night, Melanie Smith went upstairs and killed those two people. And the three people that were visiting them at the time. She was convicted of five counts of homicide for nothing more than jealousy. She was jealous because that couple seemed to have a better relationship than she did. Jealousy is something we all understand, we all have experienced, that we all know about personally. It is covetousness. It is wanting something that someone else has and that we cannot get. And covetousness is directly commanded against in the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20. That's not the only place the Bible talks about such things. If you look in the back of your Bible, if you have a concordance, and look under the word jealousy, you're going to see verse after verse after verse after verse after verse. Now, we simply don't have enough time to talk about all those verses. I encourage you to go look at them and see what God says about it. But we can kind of summarize it in this verse from James. Jealousy basically boils down to strife and selfish ambition. Strife and selfish ambition. If jealousy is common to us, and I believe it is, I ask you this morning, what is your jealousy? What are you jealous for? Because there's all kinds of different jealousies that people have. There is the romantic jealousy that Melanie Smith had. The jealousy of a husband or wife or boyfriend or girlfriend. There is the jealousy we have, I guess, that we could call work-related jealousy. To look at someone who seems to be getting ahead. Who seems to be succeeding when we are not. Who seems to get promoted when we know we deserve it. So we can be jealous in that sense. There is family jealousy. I think all of us understand this. We touched last week a little bit on Cain and Abel. Remember the first murder in the Bible back in Genesis 4. Cain killed his brother Abel not for money, not for power, not for anything other than simple jealousy. Because Abel's sacrifice was accepted by God and Cain's was not. And if you think you grow out of that sibling, family, jealousy thing, I know plenty of 60 and 70 year olds who are still arguing over who was mom's favorite <laughs> and who got preferential treatment. And the most common type of jealousy would probably be money jealousy. Wealth. Someone has more than you do, and you are jealous. This is particularly interesting to us because we live in a country with 
a lot of wealth, but also we live in a climate where that kind of envy is encouraged. Our politicians encourage that. Look at what so-and-so has. Look how much more he has. We want to punish them for having that because we deserve to have it as well. So as we think about all those jealousies, I want you to think this morning about that question. What are you jealous for? What is your jealousy? As you think about that, let's consider our readings. First in the Old Testament from Numbers 11. It is a time period when the Israelites are wandering around in the desert. They have been set free from slavery in Egypt by Moses. But they are being punished for disobedience, so they can't go right to the promised land. So they have to wander around for 40 years in the desert, which we know is an inhospitable place. Very hard to find food and water in the desert. So the Israelites start to grumble. Not only are they grumbling, they're actually jealous for their lives that they had back in Egypt. Think about that for a minute. They are jealous of the lives they led when they were slaves. Because now there's not enough food to eat and they have to eat this manna all the time. And you know what? As someone who's been on a restricted diet all week, I can tell you I kind of get that point. That food gets old after a while. So finally Moses has had it up to here. Moses has had it with these grumblers. And the Lord knows this, of course. So the Lord decides to help Moses. He pours the Holy Spirit out upon 70 of the elders. And upon receiving the Holy Spirit, they're going to be able to prophesy and help. Relieve some of the burden. Now two of those guys, Medad and Eldad, kind of received the blessing by accident. They weren't in the main group. So when they go out prophesying... Joshua notices that. Now remember, Joshua is Moses' second in command. He is the one who will become the leader after Moses dies, and he is the one who will take the Israelites into the promised land. But he sees these guys promise, uh, prophesying, and he goes to Moses and he says, boy, we've got to put a stop to this. And that's where we hear Moses say in 1129, the same verse that's on your bulletin cover, Moses says, I wish that all the Lord's people were prophets and that the Lord would put his spirit on everybody. In other words, Joshua, don't be jealous for my sake. Now we see kind of the same thing going on in our gospel lesson with John. John goes out and see these people working in the name of the Lord. So he runs back to Jesus and he says, well, we need to stop this. These guys are out doing things in your name, and they're not part of the group. They're not part of the elect. They're not part of us. And that's where we hear Jesus say then, in our gospel reading this morning, John, anyone who is for us is for us. Don't stop them. It's the same thing. No one who works a miracle in my name can soon afterwards speak evil of me. He's on our side. Are you jealous for my sake, John? We want everybody to be out there doing that. So here we see very similar situations. Joshua was jealous for Moses, and John was jealous for Jesus. But in a way, they were really jealous for themselves. See, because they thought they were special. They thought they were part of an inner group that they were picked out and selected and that they had a special position and status. John especially. Remember, John referred to himself in his own gospel as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And it was John who, with his brother James, went to Jesus and said, we'd like permission to sit on your right hand and your left hand in your kingdom. That's how special they thought they were. So it really was a misplaced jealousy. They were jealous, really, for their own position and power. And they had to be reminded, guys, that's not what the kingdom's about. It's not about your place in the kingdom. It's about something bigger, and it's about something different. 
So again, what is your jealousy? Just as these readings remind us about jealousy, they also talk to us about service in the kingdom and our place in the kingdom. And I think God reminds us of some important things here in these readings. One is that we all have a responsibility to serve. We all have a responsibility to go out into the kingdom and serve. It's not just supposed to be about Moses or Joshua. It's not just supposed to be about John and the disciples. We all have a responsibility. That's what Moses and Jesus were saying. I wish everyone had the Spirit upon them. I wish everyone was out doing something. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what we're called to do. We all have a responsibility in God's kingdom. The second thing related to that would be we each have a unique calling related to that responsibility based upon our own unique talents and spiritual gifting. In 1 Corinthians 12, Paul talks about that spiritual gifting and compares the body of Christ to a human body. And he says some people are ears, and some people are hands, and some people are feet. Everybody has a different role. The eyes don't do what the ears do, and the ears don't do what the feet do, but they all work together in the body. And that's what we're supposed to be doing as well using our individual spiritual gifts to work together in God's kingdom. In Acts chapter 6, there's an interesting story involving the disciples, or the apostles rather. Jesus has ascended back to heaven. So the apostles are now left to grow the church. And the church is growing. Part of what they're doing is trying to figure out how to feed everybody. Because at that time, if you read in the book of Acts, it said they shared everything they had, including food. Now, because the church is growing so quickly, they're having trouble administering the food. So the apostles come to all the believers and say, look... It's not right for us to wait on tables because by doing that, we're neglecting what we're supposed to be doing, which is the service and study and ministry of the Word. And so, just like in the Old Testament with the appointing of the 70 elders, it says they appointed seven people filled with the Spirit to take care of this for them. And it works the same way for us today. I have a calling. My calling is to preach and teach the word and to lead this congregation. It's not that I can't wait on tables or won't wait on tables or haven't waited on tables. But by doing that, it could possibly take away from what I'm supposed to be doing. Now, that's not me saying I'm never going to wait on tables. It's just reinforcing this point that we all have a calling. And my calling is different than your calling. But we all have one, and we're all called to work together in the kingdom. Some are called to be cooks and servers. Others musicians. Others Sunday school teachers. Let us all find our calling based upon our unique spiritual gifts. And then use them to work together to build up the body of Christ in the kingdom of God. So we all have a responsibility to serve. We all have unique different callings within that responsibility. And I think the third point we need to mention is that God is hiring immediately. If you have been anywhere out in town, you have seen the signs in front of almost every business. Hiring immediately. Help wanted. $500 sign-on bonus. Come in today and you will walk out with a job. 
It's beyond me how anybody today could be looking for a job and not find one. And it works the same way in God's kingdom. God will give you a job, though. Well, God will. God will I can almost guarantee you if you walk in and ask for a job, God will sign you up on the spot. You may not get the $500 sign-up bonus, <laughs> but he'll put you to work. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 9, 37 and 38. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray that we would have laborers to go into his harvest. As we have our farmers now going out into the fields, let us pray that God would send his laborers out into the harvest fields to go work for his glory. God is hiring immediately. So, let's circle back. What is your jealousy? What are you jealous for? I have to admit that I have jealousies. I have my own jealousies, some of which are probably sinful. I get jealous when I see pastors preaching to crowds of thousands. Boy, wouldn't that be something? To be able to reach thousands with the gospel. I get jealous when I see bigger churches more money, more resources, more people. And I look and I think, what are they doing? What are they doing that we're not doing? What are we not doing that they're doing? I look over at that community church. Sometimes we drive into town after service, 1230 in the afternoon, places packed. Traffic jam trying to get out on 44. I get jealous for that. Probably a sinful jealousy. I think we all have sinful jealousies. So I ask you, if jealousy is common to us all, what are you jealous for? Hold on to that thought. She said to be sinless like Jesus. Can't do that. We can't be sinless. But we can try to be like Jesus. What are you jealous for? Are you jealous for, a, is it a romantic jealousy like Melanie Smith, maybe not to that destructive level? Is it a work-related jealousy? A family jealousy? How many of you have jealousies going on in your family? Is it a money jealousy? If we have to be jealous, let's have that kind of jealousy. To be jealous to be more like Jesus. To be jealous for those who are going out into God's harvest field and serving. Anonymously, bravely, courageously, consistently. Let us be jealous for those who are growing in their faith through study of the word, through prayer. Let us be jealous for those who are going out and extending the hand of the gospel to those who are hurting and lost and broken. If we have to be jealous, let us be jealous for those things. Amen. Now, before we sing our hymn, I want to make a point. We had two questions. Somebody raised a hand during the sermon. I encourage that. You got a question? Let me know. Amen. Even if it's during the sermon. I don't want anybody here walking out, well, what was he saying? What was he talking about? I don't get it. That's not the point of what we're doing. Let's not turn it into a free-for-all. But if you've got a question... If you don't know, if you're like, that makes no sense to me, let's stop and talk about it. Because that's why we're here. This is not supposed to be a one-way uh, monologue. It's supposed to be a learning dialogue. So keep that in mind.
that was the case, then you would be a computer. Very good. Thank you. All right. Sermon here. I'm sorry? For what? Just because they're preaching to thousands of people doesn't mean they're preaching them. She said just because they're preaching to thousands of people doesn't mean they're reaching them. That's true. Like I said, it, I, it's a jealousy. I didn't say it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, though. Yeah. Thank you. All right? So keep that in mind. Sermon him now. Our sermon hymn is on page 295. everybody today? Everybody doing well? Everybody happy? Healthy? School going okay? Alright, I'm showing you a picture here. Who can tell me what's going on in this picture? Do you have any idea what's happening? Go ahead. She's jealous because the little sister now that's never happened to you, right? <laughs> no? That's never happened? Does that happen to you guys? No? Wow, I want to live in your family. I have a sister. She said I don't have a sister. <laughs> your brother? So you guys do not get jealous of one another. Man, I want to live in your house. This happens in almost every family. How would you, jealousy is an interesting word. How would you define it? What would you say? What would you say it is? What is jealousy? You said she's jealous because the little sister's getting all the attention. So what does that mean? What does it mean to be jealous? Someone else is getting something you want. Somebody else is getting something? Yes, ma'am? Go ahead. What were you going to say? Forgot. She forgot. Someone else, well, this, this young girl here answered the question pretty well. <laughs> Somebody else is getting something you want, right? Why can't we just be happy for that other person? 
Why can't we just be happy that the other person is getting attention or money or whatever? Why can't we be happy? Because jealousy is a negative emotion that causes your brain to like That's all true. There's a very, very simple way to crunch that down to one word, sin. Jealousy is a sinful feeling. And God does not want us to do that. So how can we be less jealous? Can we do that on our own? I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I'm not going to be jealous anymore. I'm not going to be angry or... Can I do that? Why not? Why can't I do that? It sounds like a good plan. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that this week. Because we're human and we are filled with sin. We have a sin problem, guys. That's what sin looks like. Can we fix that problem ourselves? No. We can't, because if we could, we would. So instead, we need somebody to fix it for us. Who does that? Jesus. We go to Jesus, and first of all, we say, we're sorry we were jealous. And then we say, I don't want to be jealous anymore. I want you to take it away. And Holy Spirit, make me a different person. So Jesus forgives the sin. The Holy Spirit then works in us to make us better and different people. So we need both Jesus and the Holy Spirit in this process. Do not think you can fix yourselves because you can't. Because if we could, we would. We need Jesus to forgive our sins and the Holy Spirit to make us new people. Yeah. But we need to uh, repeat this daily, like uh, repentance. Absolutely. So that we can have it. We need to come back to Jesus every day. Every time we sin, we should come to Jesus. We need to come to Jesus every day. Asking for forgiveness and the Holy Spirit to help us live in the Spirit and not in sin. Let's pray, okay? Say, Dear God, forgive me of my sin in Jesus, especially jealousy. And Holy Spirit, help me to be a new person for the glory of the Father. Amen. All right, for our success story today, a couple things. One is I'd like to follow up a little bit on what we talked about with Beverly. I don't know all the details other than what Marvin passed along. Is there anything else we can add to that, Marvin? Do we have anything back on that? As did she indicate? She accepted that, but had it, she needs to think about the time. So we have a youth director. We have someone that's going to help us attract young families and children and work with us. And we're extremely, extremely grateful that God has given us that help. So that is indeed a blessing. We are also, I think, making a difference in the lives of Tyler and Tierra Hoban. Fred and I had a long talk with her Thursday. And Fred, you can explain this a lot better than I can. Uh, what, can you, what can you tell us? Uh, she has got a job.
take it all the time together. Uh, this judge, uh, a judge that really looks on the parents that are in recovery and doing the right thing, and he's, I think he's God willing, he's going to get the right decision. Uh, we've also decided that the gracious people here at this church, the money and, and materials that we give to these people, uh, the money we're going to hang on to until the end of the year. She desperately, desperately needs a place to go. Her brother and his wife, his wife's pregnant. The only bedroom they have is where the nursery's going to be. And to keep your mind, you got to get out. And I'm telling you, people, there is nowhere to go. There is nowhere. I have a sister in the same situation. But if anybody knows of any place that's got a house for rent, two bedrooms, and about all they would need, uh, please let me know. And I appreciate the monetary uh, donations that people have been given. And uh, there's a list on the back table of items that she needs for the kids, uh, pull-up diapers, laundry soap, and some fall and winter clothes coming up. Uh, the kids are growing like weeds. I'm sure they're out of what they had last year. Uh, but everything's looking good except for the place in space. So please keep that in your prayers every day. And uh, hopefully they can find a place to go. Uh, I think they're on the right track. It, it, they're just a loving family. I, I don't... I just... Uh, can't see somebody not helping them. You know, I'm glad you guys are. Fred and I also kind of sat down with her Thursday and, and went through a budget because she, she is getting government help. But at the same time, there's still a shortfall. And so for right now, whatever donations you make, give them to Fred. He's asked to have the checks put in his name. So we may not see Fred. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just very grateful for your continuing support. They do, they, they absolutely do need help. So thank you. All right, at this time, I would ask those who are able to please stand for our gathering prayer and remain standing as we affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we know it is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry. Some preach out of selfish ambition, supposing they can stir up trouble. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
A service continues with our prayer on page 487, our responsive prayer. Let us pray. God's mighty acts among us are well known. We are people of history. God's redemptive acts were epitomized in Christ Jesus. We are people of history. God's salvation gives us hope and courage to affect history. We are people of vision. God cherishes fellowship with us in worship. We are ready to magnify the Lord. May our lives magnify what we have been given, what we are, and what we will be. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts to hear the word of God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we look at our lives, we see too often the effects of sin. Brokenness, hurt, anger, sadness, grief, and sorrow. We have members of our congregation going through all those things at this moment. But you come to us in our brokenness with hope and healing in Jesus. For those who are in grief and sorrow, that Jesus would fill them with his love and compassion. For those of us who are suffering in other ways, hurting, depressed, lonely, afraid, that we would find in Jesus strength and courage to keep going. We thank you for him, Lord. We thank you for what he's done. And may we always and ever be jealous for a greater, stronger, deeper relationship with him. And now we pray together the words he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a reminder, our collection plates are at both entrances. We thank you so much for your continuing ties and offerings and support of this congregation and of the Lord's work. I've been continually amazed at the last several council meetings to see how far ahead we are running of our budget because of your generosity and because of your consistency and your dedication to the Lord. Uh, it is truly a blessing and we thank you. At this time, I would ask those who are able to stand to please do so for our closing prayer. And please remain standing for our closing hymn. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you to forgive us the grumbling for what we do not have. And think instead on what we do have. Forgiveness, hope, and life eternal in your name. Help us all to do better in sharing this incredible gift with others. May we only be jealous for sharing your kingdom. Amen. And our closing hymn is on page 622.